In this video, we are tracking a developing tropical cyclone in the Atlantic Ocean. After that, we are looking at more severe weather in the central U.S. as the Storm Prediction Center has put out an enhanced risk for today. Also, we've got a major drought and all kinds of other stuff going on that I'm going to cover for you right now. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. On Wednesday through Thursday morning, there was a rare, prolific series of storms in Southern California that produced 66,000 lightning events. This is extremely rare for that area. Meteorologist Andy Hill here. I grew up in Southern California, and I'm pretty sure in 19 years of living there that I've never seen rain, let alone a lightning strike, in the month of June. Also, on Tuesday, the heat was on in the deep south as continued moisture and very high surface temperatures pooled over the area. Despite this, the air conditioner was off in Weatherman Cam's apartment. Have you met Weatherman Cam before? Hey, everyone. He's one of our expert weather analysts, and he lives in Mississippi, and inside of his apartment, it got up to 96 degrees. But no worries, the AC is fixed now. And even though for now it may seem like the weather pattern is overall pretty quiet, we have a lot of action to talk about. So let's jump right into it. All right, let's start off here in the Atlantic Ocean. Down here in the main development region, we have some development. That's right, this big blob you see right here is Invest 94L. All that means is that we're invested now. We think something might happen down here. And it's not just me, it's also the National Hurricane Center. Let's check it out. We've got a two day 20% probability and a five day 60% probability of a cyclone forming here, guys. It's pretty much definitely gonna happen at this point. Now, the main question is when and where will tropical storm Bonnie form? And will it end up being a hurricane? A tropical wave located over the eastern tropical Atlantic continues to produce a large area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions appear conductive for development. And once again, guys, I wouldn't be surprised if this ends up becoming a tropical storm as this is pretty impressive for June. Guys, this is a lot of convection over here. A lot of times whenever we see these AEWs or African easterly waves come off at this low of a latitude this time of year in June and July, a lot of times we don't have to worry about them over here in North America, sometimes not even in Central America. But with this one, things seem to be favorable for the continued development of it. Once again, lots of convection, lots of thunderstorms happening here, even in the diurnal minimum periods, meaning that usually thunderstorm activity increases at night with these kinds of systems. But with this one, even during the daytime, even during the minimum expected time period for expected convection, we're seeing pretty good growth. And I think that this thing's going to start spinning, son. And as you can see, the National Hurricane Center in orange here has highlighted this area to show us where that spinning could start to take place. Now, uh, this could affect the Lesser Antilles, the Leeward and Windward Islands here as early as the middle of next week. And once again, it could be a tropical depression or a tropical storm by that point. And even past that, we expect it to go even further west. So let's talk about that on the weather models. Okay, we're looking at the 500 millibar heights and vorticity now on the Euro model. Time and date's always going to be above my head there. We'll put it in Eastern time for you. And look, I have to scroll out pretty far here just to see this thing come into view, but the Euro has a pretty well-organized storm coming into frame here into the Caribbean by Tuesday into Wednesday. It's going to continue west into the Caribbean, and usually this area is known as the graveyard for tropical storms during this time of year because we usually have a lot of trade winds. We usually have a lot of wind shear down here, but buddy, all I'm seeing is some good old zonal flow, son. It's a highway for tropical storms right now. Now, uh, and there's nothing absolutely nothing stopping the upward scale growth of this storm other than a little bit of Saharan dust that's floating around out here in front of it and the fact that it's June and check this out as this thing comes in you can see that we've got a high pressure system over here we've got that ridge really steering the storm in this direction and we do have a little bit of a surface trough up here in the United States that's going to try to go out to see and watch this system in the middle it kind of gets squeezed out in between those two as the storm just continues to go unimpeded down to the south literally no impact act. All of this stuff that's going on up here has no impact on this. So uh, if that comes to fruition, we are definitely going to see a tropical storm or maybe even a hurricane make landfall somewhere over here in uh, Central America, maybe around Honduras, uh, or maybe even a little bit further north. Let me show you something. Now, here's a look at the Canadian model, and this is just the deterministic model. It's one run, but watch how much further north this storm goes. This one literally goes across Cuba, possibly up into the Gulf of Mexico right near 
near uh, Florida. This is a possibility. The, the real cone of uncertainty is that big at this point because we're so far away. Look at this. We're This is July 3rd, guys. This one does seem plausible. The environment is actually favorable for cyclonic development down here. Now, do I think that this is going to be a major hurricane? No. I think that we're going to see a tropical storm, maybe a low-end hurricane, and I think the odds are right now that it's going to go somewhere down in here, but on the very off chance that it actually does make it up into the Gulf or towards Florida, uh, I'm definitely going to keep a very close eye on it for you guys. There will be no swirly boys that make it by the Ryan Hall Y'all channel. I don't care if it's a nader, a water spout, a cyclone, a tropical storm, a typhoon, a hurricane. It don't matter to me. I've got my eyes on it, and if you want to have your eyes on it too, make sure you hit that subscribe button. So let's take a look at some spaghetti models, okay? So this is a bunch of different models from the Euro Suite put together showing all the different possible tracks this storm could take according to the Euro model. You can see that the general idea is that it's going to follow that zonal flow towards Central America. And of course, looking at the Canadian spaghetti plots, this one is even more skewed to the north, taking this thing potentially even north of Cuba and up towards the southeastern United States. So as you can see, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we do know that something is going to happen. Now, there's going to be some bad actors out there on the internet. There's going to be some people hyping this one up like crazy, like always. But guys, remember, don't be scared. Be prepared. And every day, we're going to learn more about the storm and, and whether or not we should be concerned about it. So make sure you stay tuned. And you know, I'll always keep you updated right here. All right, coming back to the mainland, let's talk about some severe weather today. We got an enhanced risk of severe weather up here in North Dakota, Minnesota, and portions of South Dakota. This includes Fargo, Bismarck, Grand Forks, and Pierre... I know I didn't say that right. I, I'm the YouTube weatherman, baby. Take it or leave it. <laughs> No, but for real, you guys are under an enhanced risk of severe weather today, uh, but why? It's certainly not for tornadoes, even though there is a slight chance of a tornado today, especially up there closer to Bismarck and Grand Forks. The further north you go towards Manitoba, actually, the better chance you have of seeing a brief, weak tornado today. But today's threat is actually driven by wind. Look at this. We got a 30% hatched risk of severe damaging wind in the red hatched area there. And we got a 15% that goes all the way down into Grand Island, Lincoln, and Omaha, and Nebraska. But that's not all. Do you like hail? Do you like big ice balls falling out of the sky well that's what we've got for you today once again in fargo bismarck and grand forks up here mostly in north dakota where we do expect some big old updrafts and that's going to lead to some hailstones right on your doorstep so call 1-800-SPC that's 1-800-SPC storm prediction center for your special order of potentially baseball size hail today nah but for real keep your guard up today these are going to be some strong storms up here they're going to start actually popping off down here in colorado and wyoming around 2 p.m we can see some mountain storms, lots of lightning, thunder, heavy rain with those. But you can see very clearly that along our trough, we have a big boundary here. And this is what's going to propagate off to the north and east and cause our thunder boomers. Here we go. Three, two, one. Explosions in the sky ahead of that boundary where we could see, once again, supercells. And then eventually a big squall line of nasty wind-driven storms all the way through, oh my goodness, 4, 5 a.m. Once again, the bigger supercells and really the biggest risk for tornadoes, I think is going to be up here in Canada. And maybe if we get a supercell like this north of Grand Forks and all these ones that you're seeing over here near Winnipeg, not only do we have to be worried about really the, the big hail with these storms, there, there's, there's going to be big updrafts with these, but there's a little bit more of a tendency for cyclonic rotation with the current setup uh, the further north we go. So I would watch all of these storms today uh, between 6, 7, and 8 p.m. because this is also the time where we naturally get that enhancement of the lower level jet stream. So these ones could could put down some naders. For the most part, especially the further south you go, this is mostly going to be a straight line damaging wind threat. We're going to see some big storms from Nebraska all the way up into South Dakota. Uh, but this right here, if this actually happens, if we get a big uh, convective system of uh, storms like this, we're certainly going to see some widespread wind damage up here in northern Minnesota. So watch out for this all the way through 3, 4, possibly even 5 a.m. tomorrow morning as these storms finally fizzle out into a big old rain bag around Minneapolis, Rochester, all the way down down into eastern portions of Iowa. And of course, that's going to continue to go off to the north and east, and it's really not going to cause much of a problem on Sunday, but we will see some more convection out here uh, in the Ohio Valley, possibly even back here towards the southern U.S. Uh, with some more storms. But as of right now, everything seems pretty tame with those. But as always, you want to be weather aware. You never want to let your guard down, okay? Also, it's also super helpful to have your own professional radar app, the same one that I use. Let's shout out our sponsor. You know what time it is. Radar Omega, the best weather app, no cap.
Radar Omega is a professional radar app that meteorologists use, storm chasers use, I use, and you can use on your phone, iOS, or Android. And with a subscription, you can actually use it on your PC. It's what I use during live streams. This is the most powerful storm tracking app. Radar Omega provides you with high quality Nexrad radar data to keep you alert on rapidly changing weather conditions. Not only can you look at radar, but you get your warnings, your severe weather outlooks, and also all kinds of other data through this app. My favorite thing is you can look at satellite data in 3D. And in fact, you can look at model data, radar data, and all that in 3D. And like, how cool is that? I was a big fan of them long before they sponsored me. And I just want people to have this in their toolbox because I believe it's a life-saving product. So what are you waiting for? Hit those links down in the description for iOS or Android to download Radar Omega today. You will not regret it. I can promise you that. Now, let's get back into the video. All right, moving forward, let's talk about the Southwest a little bit. That's different, but we have had a pretty historic start to monsoon season over here in New Mexico. Some places in New Mexico have seen four inches of rain, which is 400% more than what you normally would get between right now and when this started on June 15th. And if we zoom out and we look at the anomalies for the last 30 days, you can see that it's actually been much wetter than normal here in New Mexico, despite a long dry period just before this previous rain burst. So that just shows you how much this is affecting everything in New Mexico. Lots of moisture coming up, and this is not your typical monsoonal moisture, but it's going to be sticking around for a little while longer. So that's going to continue here. But look at everybody else almost everybody else <laughs> except for these intermittent spots here and there uh we're, we're experiencing uh, much less rainfall than usual we've got a drought ongoing for a lot of places over here in the west central u.s uh, we've got a developing drought for a lot of people in the uh, central u.s up into the upper midwest even a developing drought over here from florida into the carolinas okay and up here in the northeast like we have a lot of places that are below average with their rainfall not only over the past 30 days but let's spread it out all the way to the last 100 120 days and you can see exactly what I'm talking about everybody in the red towards the pink is anywhere from 3 to 10 inches below average over the past 120 days and if we look at the GFS into the future it looks like a lot of these places aren't going to get much relief at all it does look like we're going to get a little bit more moisture over here in some of the places in the southeastern U.S. that need it but a lot of the Ohio Valley in the northeast and the Great Lakes region and of course down here into Texas and Oklahoma uh, you guys are just not getting as much rain as what you need. Once again, if you're in a drought and you live in a wildfire prone area, July 4th is like the day that we all go outside and blow stuff up in the sky. We, we play with fire. It's awesome. I love it. I love it. But I wouldn't be doing my job here if I didn't try to say, hey, you know, keep it to a minimum. And if you have a red flag warning or any sort of restrictions up, don't be setting stuff on fire, y'all. Come on now. A huge shout out to all of our members over here. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the channel. I've got a new video going up on the Ryan Hall Y'all Extra channel today. It's about that Mullica Hill tornado in New Jersey last year that we covered live on this stream. I think you guys will want to see that. Lots of good recaps over there on that channel. You don't want to miss that stuff, okay? So go subscribe to it. And subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.